Hello everybody, welcome to Chin Fat. In this episode, I'm going to be showing you guys how to create a timeline inside of Premiere Pro. Uh, last couple episodes, I showed you guys how to import, showed you how to organize and kind of rename things with inside of the software. But now we're going to show you how to create a timeline. And keep in mind that when I say timeline, another word that Premiere uses is they, they use the word timeline, they also use the word sequence. So basically it's a sequence of edits within a timeline. So sometimes I'll say either timeline or sequence and they're pretty much used synonymously. In a timeline, now I've got a big mix of different types of footage here. One way of, telling, of being able to tell what sort of footage, because this is really important and to make sure that you get the right timeline to start with. If you're mixing footage on a timeline, you'll want to consider uh, a couple different things. You want to want to consider, well, let's go down here, the new item icon at the bottom right hand corner. By the way, I am in under assembly mode right now. If you go up here uh, and go under these modes here, I want, the default is to be under editing mode right here. I kind of like when I'm doing organization and whatnot to go under the assembly mode. And the assembly mode just gives you a lot more area here in your project window where you can operate with your media and organized media. All right, to create a new timeline, one way of doing it is going down to this new item icon at the bottom right-hand corner of your project window here. So if we click on that and hit new sequence, it'll bring up a whole bunch of different options here. I very rarely use this, uh, but you can search through it and find different types of ca different camera types, different, re different resolutions, different frame rate. But I bring this up because it's important to know a couple of different things about your project and the nature of the media that you're working with. And the two major things that you need to know about the nature of your footage, it will be resolution and frame rate. And right here with, with this preset that I've selected here, this is a 1920 by 1080 resolution. It has a 1.0 pixel aspect ratio, which is somewhat important as well. And then it's got your frame rate. But these are the two things right here is your resolution, 1920 by 1080, and your frame rate. That's essentially 30 frames per second. It's 29.97. This is uh, that frame rate. This is likely considered drop frame. Not going to get into that, but uh, just, to just know that a lot of the footage that you're shooting on a lot of prosumer cameras are going to be at a broadcast frame rate, which is rather than 24 frames per second, uh, which is film, it's going to be 23.976, and for 30 frames per second, it's going to be 29.97, and for 60 frames per second, it will be 59.94. So, and, and that deals with, with a broadcast time, but if you're doing straight up film, you're usually going to do a 24 frame per second timeline, just 24 straight across. But also know that 23.976 is also considered 24 frames per second. So with all this different media here, I kind of have to determine what sort of project I'm going to be working in here. I'm going to go under my red footage here and select one of these here. And uh, with one of my clips selected here, you got to go up to, if you go up, up above, it's going to show you some quick little uh, information tidbits. If that's not showing, you're going to hit this little uh, three tab pull down right here, and you're going to go and check mark preview area. So if it looks like this and there's nothing up there, pull this down and go under preview area. And then whatever you have selected will show those basics here. Your video, this here, this red footage, as it is 5K, 5120 by 2700. And this was shot at 23.976 progressive scan here. That's what the P stands for. So if you want to have a timeline based off the settings, let's say I just want to work in a 4K timeline. And I'm going to be mixing and matching footage. So I'm going to go under my drone footage here. Go to one of these here. I'm going to select one of these and see what the settings are. This is 4096 by 2160, and it's also shot at 23.976, which is a very common frame rate for film editing. Let's say I want to use that resolution right there as my timeline. That's a true 4K timeline, and I want everything else that I put into it to kind of. And I'm going to show you some issues that you kind of run into with this here. So, so I'm going to grab this uh, file right here, and I'm going to use that as my settings here. I'm going to drag it and hold it over the new item icon right down here, and let go and it will create a new timeline here. And now that timeline is going to share the exact same settings as that clip that I just dropped in here. So in fact, here's the timeline that it generated right there and it just named it after the clip, but you got this little icon right there that looks like a timeline with a playhead on it. So, so that is the icon for a timeline right there. And you can have as many timelines as you want in Premiere Pro. So I'm gonna grab this file actually. I'm gonna grab this timeline, I'm gonna drag it out of this folder, drop it right over here. That's gonna drop it out of the folder and just put it into my project window. And there it is right there. So I select that. And you'll see that the resolution is 4096 by 2160, and the frame rate matches the clip there. Now watch this. If I have a clip, if I generate a new clip, a new timeline here, and I don't have anything in it, if I grab some footage and I drop it into that timeline, and the settings on this clip mismatch the settings of my timeline, and I have nothing in it right now, but watch what happens when I drag it in. As long as you have nothing in it and I drop it in, it's going to say this clip does not match the sequence of settings. That means that the, the the sequence settings are different from that of, the, of that clip that I tried to drag into it. So I can either tell it to change the sequence settings to match the clip that I just dragged dropped into it, or I can keep existing settings. This instance, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna, to uh, keep existing settings, uh, but I'm going to select this clip and delete it, and we're going to drop some drone footage into it. But let's, let's rename this timeline here. I'm going to rename this 
drone editing or something, whatever you want to call this. Even though I'm going to be putting other footage besides drone in it. So drone editing. The way I, I, I rename that is you select the timeline, hit return or enter the big enter key on a PC, and then you type in the new name. So let's drop some footage in here. I'm going to drag that and drop it into the timeline. It didn't ask me that because these settings here, that clip, is what I use to generate that timeline. So the timeline settings match. Let's go to the end of this timeline here. I'm going to hit my end key on my timeline, go to the end, and I'm going to put some different footage in. So now let's go and look at our footage here. So I've got some footage here that is 3840 by 2160, so it's slightly less than 4K. So what's going to, and look at this, this is a mismatched frame rate. The frame rate is at a true 24 frames per second. Uh, and that's fine if you drop it in. Once you have your timeline set to the uh, timeline that you desire, when you drop clips into it, it will do what's called conforming. The, it'll play the footage a little bit differently. It usually uh, drops a fr frame of time code here and there uh, to be able to fit that in to, in to match the same time code that's in on in the timeline. They're pretty close, so I shouldn't have any trouble conforming them. So if I dra drag and drop this into my timeline, it dropped it in just fine. But one thing I want you to notice here is look at this. This is called pillar boxing here. The resolution of this clip here, if I select this clip, select the whole clip in here, you'll notice the wireframe around it uh, does not match the resolution. This is a different resolution. It's slightly, uh, it's it's not as wide as the 4K sequence that you see, the 4K clip that you see over here. So what it ended up doing is when I dropped it in is it does, does what's called pillar boxing uh, to make, make the resolution match. Now if we find something that's at uh, even higher resolution, this one has the same vertical resolution as 2160 as this clip here, so it matches it just fine. Uh, vertically, but just horizontally, it's got the, these bars that it's added on, on the end because it doesn't have the same wide aspect ratio. So let's go to the red footage here and drop that in. Drop a clip with mismatching uh, resolution in. And what ha has happened here, this footage is 5K footage, and I dropped it in a 4K timeline. So if I double click on this, the wireframe out here for that clip, it has zoomed, it, it has dropped in just the resolution of this. Since this is higher resolution, it is basically zoomed up on the clip. So look at this, if I go to the wireframe and drag this smaller, uh, there's my entire clip right there. The aspect ratio matches, but this is, uh, but the resolution is higher, and therefore it zoomed up on the image when it dropped it into a 4K, since it's a smaller resolution timeline. Now there's a way, little way around that as well, so I'm going to delete the footage out of there. I'm going to select all my red footage here. Because uh, this is, a, let's say, I want my final timeline to be this 4K timeline, even though this footage was shot at 5K, which is a higher resolution. I've got the, all this footage selected. You're going to go up to Clip. You're going to go to Video Options, and you're going to say Scale to Frame Size. Scale to Frame Size. Watch what that does. When I drop this into a timeline now, it has scaled this down to meet the proper resolution of this file here. This is the same aspect ratio, so it didn't do any letterboxing and didn't do any pillar boxing. Letterboxing is basically when, if your aspect ratio is too wide for the uh, the sequence setting, you would have black bars on the bottom and on the top rather than on the sides. Those bars would be on the top and bottom, and that's called letterboxing. Now I have some footage down here that is, it's a little higher than 1920 by 1080, it's called 2K footage, it's 2048 by 1080. So watch what happens here, same thing, if I drop this into this timeline here, and we move over it, look what it does, it does window boxing, basically adds all these bars on the side because this resolution is literally about one quarter of the resolution of the 4K footage here. So it, so it's a much smaller, so it, it makes it a smaller uh, file in this, in this timeline here. So once again, uh, you can either do this, you can right click on this clip, and go to scale to frame size right there, and it will size it up to make it meet, meet the size of the timeline. But if I take all this media here, if you want to add that attribute to all this media here, I'm going to select it all, go up to clip, go to video options, and we're going to say scale to fr frame size. It added that attribute to each one of these clips, check mark that, uh, that, that attribute on every one of these clips. So now any one of these clips that I grab and drop it into my timeline, look what it does. It scales it up to meet the size of the timeline. So it, this is even though this is 2K footage, it scaled it up. It upscaled it to 4K, which doesn't necessarily make the quality any better. It just scales it up to, to so you don't have a whole bunch of different uh, resolutions and aspect ratios inside of the same timeline. And also you do have the option of when you import the footage, you don't have to select the footage and add that attribute to it. You can have it add it automatically when it imports your footage. So if you go under Premiere Pro, if you go and on the PC, you go under Edit and Preferences and you go to Media, you have this option right here, this default media scaling. If you pull this down, you can tell it to scale the frame size. I have a separate episode I'm going to show the difference between uh, scale to frame size and scale, set to frame size later. But just scale the frame size here, and I'm going to hit OK. Now, any footage that I import that is that set, that is a different differing resolution than my timeline, it's going to check mark that automatically. Let's import some footage. Let's grab a couple clips right here and import those. There's my media I just imported. I grab one of these, drag and drop it into the timeline. And this is also 2K footage, and now look what it's done. It's zoomed it up to fill up the screen here. 
All right, last thing on timelines here is you can have multiple timelines. So let's say I want to do a different edit of this timeline right here. I can basically, one of the best ways of doing this is of creating a new timeline is if you want it the exact same settings, just right click on an available timeline and say duplicate. It will duplicate with the word copy 01 at, at the end of it. So I can hit return and I can change this. We'll call this red footage editing, whatever you want to call it. But now I've got these two timelines and they've duplicated. So if I double click on this, it opens it up down here. And now you have two tabs that are open down here. You have two different timelines that are open down here, my drone editing and my red footage. But notice it's got the exact same footage because I duplicated that. So I can just hit command A or control A to select all and delete hit my home key to go to the beginning, and now I have a clean timeline ready to go start editing again. So there are my two timelines, my drone editing, now my red footage one, and I can start editing there. You can close these windows here. By the way, sometimes people will close their timeline windows and not know where their timeline went to. If you hit this X here, it'll close it and close that. Now I have no timelines open and people are going like, oh, where did my timeline go? Well, you basically go up here and look at, and if you created a timeline in one of these folders and didn't dig it out, you can go to your search window here and type in the word sequence. The timelines are also called sequences. Uh, so just keep that in mind. When you search sequences, it will bring up just this. If you have any sequences, let's in fact, let me clear that out. I'm going to put one of these sequences inside of a folder right there. So if you don't, if you're looking for your timeline, you don't know where it is. Well, there's this one. So we can just double click on that one and it opens it up and it's restored. But if I'm looking for my other timeline here, I can click on here and type in sequence and it will open up all my sequences. And there it is in my sound folder. It found this red footage uh, editing one here. I can double click on it and now it opens up and I have these two timelines open now. And like I said, I don't like them inside of these deep inside these folders. So I'll just drag that over to the left, drop it, and it has dropped it out of that folder. And there are my two sequences right there. Well, that's about it for this episode. Just remember that when you're creating timelines, you want to be very aware of what your settings are. It's very specifically resolution and your frame rate as well uh, before you just start throwing things in. Because I've had I've seen people just create a go down here and create a custom timeline. It ends up being like a really small resolution and a mismatched frame rate, and then they drop it in and it brings down the quality of the footage and it doesn't look good. So just be very aware of that, uh, what the settings of your timeline are and what the settings of your footage is so you can kind of match those uh, settings to your timeline. All right, so if you have any questions or comments, please post them and thanks for watching.